Okay, so in this video, I'll be taking my uh, 2D scrolling game that I made in the previous video, and I'll be um, editing that or make change, making some changes to that so that it's more realistic. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making a, a scrolling background. Now you can see this is my previous game from the previous video, and you can see that it actually moves the character. Now what we want to do is we don't want to move the character, we want to scroll the background instead and keep the character at a constant spot. So we'll take this x value we had before at 10, we'll make it 75, and instead of drawing our character at p.getx, we'll just draw it at a constant value of 75. And instead of making, now you can see that instead of making it at our background at 0, 0, we want, we want to make this a variable. And we're, to do this, we're going to go back here and we're going to introduce a new variable called nx2. Did I use nx already? No, nx2. So, um, now we're going to set nx2's initial value equal to our the length of our frame because we want our uh, background to our, our second background to appear at the uh, end of the frame and our frame is six seven seven hundred long pixels so we'll make it about a bit less than that six eighty five is reasonable and we'll use nx2 and we'll just go nx2 is equal to nx2 plus dx so the exact same thing we did with x we're going to do with nx2 it should be changing at the same points as the other one is so here we'll just go p dot nx2 and this just as you can see this value is going to get larger and if if this gets larger the background moves to the right we want the background to scroll towards the left so that it feels like you're moving forward and to do this we can put a negative sign here and but now your initial value as you can see is 685 so your initial background is going to be all the way to the left far left so we want to put 685 minus 685 for the initial value so the initial value here is going to be zero and as and as nx2 gets larger it's going to appear that the background moves to the right so you can see that now our background moves to the right but now there's a problem there's going to be a point where our background is going to end right at this point and at this point, what we'd want to ideally do is create another background right here so that when you move forward, it looks like there, there's a continuation. They're connected. And we're, first, we're going to have to find that point. So let's just use a system.out.print line and let's print our x value to check what that point exactly is. So you can see that as we move forward, and we stop here we can see you can see here that the x uh, x value seems to be about 590 so at about 590 we need to create another background so let's do so here by doing uh well delete this now if p dot get x is greater than 590 then we're literally just going to copy paste this down here and you can see it's going to create another um, background, but we don't want to create it at the same point because that's just going to create a background over top of our current background at zero. So what we want to do is we want to create another va variable. Let's make it nx. And this one we want to start it at zero. And we want to do the same thing here. nx is equal to nx plus dx. So they're all going to move with as you move the character. But what we want to do is if... Uh, p dot get x is 590 then you want to make our p dot nx equal to 0 okay and likewise if p dot get x is the the position after 590 when the white screen appears or when the background ends which is 590 plus the length of our whole background which is 590 plus 1200 that's the length of my background it's actually 1790 you want to make p dot nx2 equal to zero so you can see now if i just make this minus nx at at the point 590 it's going to be uh let's make it greater than or equal to it's going to be um, 
685 minus 0. So it's going to create a background at the edge of my frame. And you can see that if I run it now, the first background still ends at that 590 point, but then it creates a new background right at the same point. And it looks like they're connected from here and here, but my background's not perfect, so it doesn't look like they're fully connected. So we've done that so far, but now there's another problem. This is only going to work for 590 and 1790. We want this to work for all values. We want to be going forever and ever, and we just want it to keep going. So we're going to use a function called the modulus. And what the modulus function basically does is it gives you the remainder of a division. So we can see that if we do p dot get x minus 590, and you can confirm this by just dividing, modded by 2400, so every 2400 um, pixels, we want to check if, uh, if the remainder is zero. And if it is zero, that means that um, it is at a point such as 590, 590 plus 2400, or 590 plus 2400 plus 2400, and so on. Likewise with this, we want to do 590 minus um, 1790 mod 2400 is 0. And at this point, we want to make our nx2 value equal to 0. And so these two work fine. And now you can see that if I run, run it now, you can see that uh, basically what we're doing here is this is our first value of nx2. And now at this point, we create a new background of nx, which we made right here. It was p minus, so 590 minus 590 mod 2400 was 0. So we made nx equal to 0. We created a new background here. And now we're going to see that this first nx2 value is going to come back here at the end right here because, well, 1790 minus 1790 mod 2400 is 0. And now, after this, our first nx value is going to come all the way back to the beginning, uh, as you can see here. So it's going to keep going forever. So that's our basic scrolling background. Now I'm going to add an, a, one more thing here, if you're interested. I'm going to uh, implement moving left. So as you can see, I have in my uh, C drive a new picture. And it's called left. And basically, it's just the exact same st first image, except it's inverted to the left. Now, what I'm going to do is I am... So, I'm going to load up this picture, left picture, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new image icon. L is equal to new image icon, and I'm going to put C left.png. That's where my picture was located, and this will load up the picture. Actually, I'm just going to move both of these up here as global variables. And now what's going to happen is when you press left on your keyboard, then it's going to load up this picture. And we'll go still is equal to L dot get image. So still is what you're returning when, on your image. And that's what you're using to draw the character right here. So now when you press left, it's going to load your left image. And when you press right, it's going to load the same image you had before. So we have uh, still is equal to s.getImage. And actually, it wasn't called s. It was called i. But anyways, um, now you can see that when you move left, it loads your left image. Now we have to fix what is the next problem and that is actually moving a character to the left if you do so because usually in side scrolling games you cannot you cannot move back you cannot move back into the map that you've already discovered so we're going to fix that real quick now we're going to create a new variable called left and I'm just going to call it left for because it's used when we're moving left and its initial value is whatever you want to put your initials um, character 2 and you can put it to whatever I'll put it to 150 it seems reasonable now when you're drawing your character you're gonna use this left value and 
what what's going to happen here is that you're going to do if dx is not negative 1 so you're only going to add x and nx if you're moving to the right okay and you're not going to add it if you're moving left because you don't want your screen to move to the left like i just said so we're going to put all these in there and what we're going to do is we're going to use this left variable this left variable that i created this is going to be used. This this is going to be changed at times. So this 75 is no longer constant. We're going to use p dot left. Okay. Now, what we want to do is now we can see that when we move left, it doesn't move left. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to allow the allow the user to move the character towards the left only until the end of the screen. So from here to 